Hello and welcome to my quick tutorial on how to set up RDA which is a telemetry application uh, for Dirt Rally 2. Um, here we go, I'll take you through all the steps to get it going. Okay, first first thing you want to do is go to straight straight to race department, uh, racedepartment.com in the, the address bar there. Okay, once you've done that, go to search and search for RDA. Press return. Okay, and you'll see in here a resource RDA 1.2. Click on that. Now you will need to log in to download, so it's best you sign up with Race Department. It doesn't cost anything, um, and they are quite a good source for information about sim racing in general. As you can see, there's plenty of information here. The guy who wrote it is very, very, um, how can we say, professional. Uh, very professional in the way he's done everything, so that's very good. Um, all the instructions are there already. He includes everything you need to get started. So this video is just really like a hold your hand tutorial on getting started. Now once you've logged in, download it. Okay, Save it into a folder. As you can see, I saved it into a folder and it's, it, it appears as a zip file. So I went in there and extracted the folder itself into the parent folder. So we're going there. Now, let's get rid of that. You'll see you've got a PDF file there. Open this PDF file and move down. Yeah, keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling until you get to here. Okay, how to set up Dirt Rally and Dirt Rally 2 UDP ports. Okay, so open the documents from my games. Okay, so we'll g let's go there. Okay, so if you're in Windows 10, you should be set up just like mine um, you go to this PC documents my games Dirt Rally 2 hardware settings then right click on config XML um, and you can edit with your edit it with your various uh, program of choice I have notepad plus plus installed which is probably the best thing to use okay so here we are in Right, we're editing it now and if you see it's near the top there's a section called motion platform okay and it's from there to there and this is the bit we need to modify so without further ado let's set let's set the windows up correct nice and nice and uh, visible all right okay now, uh, D-box enabled with false. Right, D-box enabled equals true on this one, so we'll change it to false. Okay, just make sure you do it correct. Okay, UDP, if we have a look over here, two extra set, delay one, delay one extra data zero. Right, so this one needs to be on three, on extra data. Right. UDP enabled equals true. So change that. Okay. Now there is actually as you can see there, there's a few of these with different ports. So they're all going to be similar. So what we're going to do is highlight that. Control C or copy, do it that way so you can see. Uh, press return, right click, paste, and we do it again. Paste. Alright, so there should be three of those. So one's for port 2077, the other's for port 3500. Th T500. 
Okay. It's all on enabled true extra data three. It's cool for all of them. Port here is one four one two three. Four one two three. Okay. Next one we'll double check the custom UDP. Enabled equals false. That is correct. File name packet data XML, yeah. IP da 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 port 207077 delay 1 so no change on that fan attack enable 2 precision scale 1 vibration 1 true right. okay so that's all fine on the motion platform so we save this okay close that and Close this. Okay, we've finished editing that, so there's no need to edit it any anymore. So we'll leave it at that. Um, next, next thing to do is to click on data acquisition .exe, do send to desktop create shortcut. Okay, that's created my shortcut here. Um, and if I double click on it, okay, um, this is like a menu it's not much of a menu it's just like a launcher sort of thing really where once you've got the game started okay you tab out and once you're about to do your stage time tab out and you click record and then stop okay when you're finished so hit record and stop now, I actually recommend that um, you do one lap at a time, like go in, record, and stop. I haven't tried it with doing multiple laps or anything yet, so um, I don't know how it's going to store the data for multiple laps. So um, we just do it, do, do it one lap at a time for now. Okay, so once you've recorded a lap, Okay, you'll need to be able to view the data. Now, in here, you can see it stores log data in here, and we have one there, MoTeC log file. Now, to get MoTeC, um, you need to go to their website. So, let's go to MoTeC. MoTeC, MoTeC downloads, there we go, okay, so download section, software, latest releases, okay, now what we're looking for is i2 standard, not pro, 64-bit, okay, now we can download this as is happening there. I'll cancel that because I don't want it. I've already got it. Uh, okay, cancel that. Let's get out of there. Once we've uh, once we've done it, um, we will go through the install process, and that will in install and get you a desktop item, desktop icon as well, um, which we've got here. So let's launch it. Motec i2 is, is totally free by the way, you don't have to pay a penny for it, which is very good. Um, now, <clears throat> if, I, if I click on Rally Workspace, I get a setup, and lo and behold, I've actually set this setup myself a little while ago, so it looked different to, your, it looked different to what you get as standard. Um, because what you get a standard, let's just go back again for you, uh, may more resemble one of these here. And I've modified mine to, to suit myself, my layout. So I'll, I'll open a log file, and it goes to the log file folder that we was in just a moment ago. 
um, and you see it's got Yambula Mountain Ascent. Okay, plenty of details, single stage, etc. Blah blah blah. All the summary on the right showing you what we did Australia as a rally single stage. Um, so let's let's take a look. Let's open. And you can see that we've got various graphs here um, and dials and things telling you loads of information about that single stage we did. And this was a particular this particular one was a time trial stage that I recorded. Um, if I hit play, you can see here we've got engine RPM, car corrected speed, um, the false latitude and longitude, so effectively the car sliding from side one side to the other, like G-forces, and uh, that's inflicted on upon the body as it's, it's, it's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing around everywhere. Um, suspension positions, okay, so you can see where you're bottoming out, and you may need to adjust your ride height and spring rate and things like that to to suit the track better. Um, and uh, wheel speed, uh, which particularly would show areas where, um, let's take for example this graph here. Now, if you look up here, we've got like lots of red little peaks. Um, we do get some in other colours, like there's a bit of blue there, light blue. Um, but mostly it's red. Now, if we have a look down here, we can see wheel speed front left, wheel speed front right. Now, this particular car uh, has a slight bias to the front front wheel drive, so that's why you're getting a little bit of wheel spin in there. But you're not getting much at all. So it may be that you know if you pick a rear wheel drive car and uh, you know floor it and skid, you know you'll get quite a lot of uh, differences there. So you could work out on you could work out your uh, settings for like a, uh, ABS for example and um, and various other things such as traction, traction control um, okay what else can I say brake temperatures they're a bit strange um, they start off let me move the line over to the left they start off at minus, minus 100 and something stop that Minus 101, <laughs> pretty bizarre. And they go up and up, up, up 200 degrees at one point. And that's what you do, you grab the line, move it somewhere, and you press start and stop up here. Okay, now there is a, a track layout as well, view, show track. Okay, so you can see where it is on the track. Um, there is another piece of telemetry software that I liked. It was better than this, really, in some ways. Um, and that was a piece of software called PCAR's Profiler. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not for that's not for um, Dirt Rally Two. Unfortunately, it's a shame. Um, but I'll just quickly show you that. So you can see what it looks like. Uh, maybe I can't because I haven't got any. Uh, I haven't got any uh, ones that I did recently, so I don't no, forget that. Forget that. I should edit that out actually. <laughs> right. Okay. So back to business. We've got a stuff from Motex, let's get rid of that. We've got our log files in here. Now, I don't know what the extension date is for, but it obviously comes with it. Um, you've also got like a, a comma separated value file, which is quite interesting. So that might give you a bit, bit of information about what's going on as well, so you can play around with your figures. Okay, that's all out, output by RDA. Uh, okay, so once you've finished in here, close this, and you can. I'll just quickly show you that if we go to lock layout there, a layout lock layout, we can unlock it, and then we can say so go down here, 
do add a gauge. Let's have a bar, shall we? Okay, we're going to add a bar. And what channel are we going to use? Click on that now. We can select lots of different channels. So we could have like a. Uh, what should we have? So have throttle position. Display horizontal. Okay, we're happy with that. All right, I've made a throttle position scale. Now, if we go here, you can see it acts in exactly the same way as that throttle position gauge, just going sideways because we set it up to go sideways. Okay, so we we don't really want that anyway, so we're just going to delete it now, like so. But you can set it. You can set it up to like any any channel you want. And uh, these are the channels. Um, so yeah, by all means, go and do as you wish. Okay, so I'm going to stop the uh, stop the tutorial now. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please welcome to leave a comment and everything. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the comment like the content sorry <laughs> okay i shall now disappear thank you for joining me bye bye